It seems that almost every month there is some new report on the patient variables that affect clopidogrel's effectiveness. Frankly, it has become a bit overwhelming. Is it polymorphism, smoking history, other drugs, and on and on and on. Now in Jack is another report with an intriguing title. Here's the title, Clopidogrel Pharmacokinetics and Pharmacodynamics Vary Widely Despite Exclusion of Control of Polymorphisms, Noncompliance, Diet, Smoking, Co-Medications, and Pre-existent Variability in Platelet Function. There's a mouthful. But what does that mean? Does this just add to the complexities of clopidogrel use? Well, the report is about 160 normal subjects, ages 20 to 53 years, that were homozygous for CYP2C19, had not smoked for six weeks, had no prescription drugs on board for four weeks, and no caffeine or alcohol for 72 hours. They received clopidogrel 75 milligrams a day for nine days, and then pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic endpoints were measured. What the researchers found was that clopidogrel pharmacokinetics varied widely between subjects and platelet responses also varied widely. Not only that, but high on treatment reactivity was present in 45% of the subjects. Now, that is unsettling. All of the attempts to make clopidogrel most effective in its action simply failed. The authors conclude that as yet unidentified factors have a great impact on clopidogrel pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, and that they vary widely despite rigorous exclusion of all the factors that we thought were also operative. High on treatment platelet reactivity is common, and of course, this translates into a higher risk of thrombosis and adverse cardiovascular events. Perhaps it is a blessing that we now have emerging drugs that not only are more effective, but hopefully more reliable in their action. I'm Peter Block, and this is a CardioSource Heart Minute.